Hello, Nyan. How are you? I hope you're fine. Hello. How do you Thank feel? You. Very good. Let me open this window. I think you can see me better. We can see each other better. All right. Can you see me well? Let me just clean up my screen. Right. I think you can see me better now, right? Yeah. Later. Okay. So I hope you are fine, Nyan. Let's get started with our class. Nyan, question for you. Magic question. What did we learn before? <laughs> That's right. You already know the magic, the magic hmm. question. All right. What did we talk about in our previous class? The past simple, right? I remember like that. All right, we talk about the past simple, and especially we make an extra emphasis in its pronunciation. All right, in its pronunciation, we were uh, having like some emphasis in the pronunciation of a uh, past simple. And um, I think I gave you a homework, right? Yes, I sent you already. You sent me the homework, I was checking. So let me share to you my screen. So let me just review a little bit, or okay. let's, let's refresh. Now, wait, but you know what? The fact is today I got sick, oh my God, not oh, COVID. You, you're feeling, you were feeling sick, you were feeling sick or you were sick? Yes, I just sick today, but in the morning, then uh, afternoon, then- Are you feeling better now? In the now? afternoon, it's better. Yes, it's better. Okay. It is so good. If you are feeling better, if you are feeling better, it makes me feel better to me, all right? Because you're you're healthy, you're getting better. So let's refresh a little bit. In our last class, we were learning lesson two B, in which we talked about the past simple in English, obviously. So we talk about the past of the verb to be. And also we talk about the termination of the verbs and its pronunciation to refer to the past tense in English, all right? We also learned how to use, all right, the past tense in English, the different cases, for example, to, to express complete action in the past, to describe a series of completed action in the past, to express habits in the past, for stative verbs such as have, on, be, think, believe, know, dislike, name, or in which. So we talked about that in our last class. Nyan, we also were trying to find the correct answer, the past tense in this test. All right, we covered all these parts. And I think, oh, we complete, well, yeah, yeah, we did. We completed this exercise, right? Uh, filling the gaps with the past tense, we did so. So we also completed this exercise that was referring to the pronunciation of these verbs. All right, what you listen or what could, what you could listen before, then we use it, all right, to complete mm. this exercise. Then we filled the exercise after that, I also remember we covered this part, yeah. okay? When, in which we also used the different ways of a past tense, okay? So we also completed this exercise. And in general, that was it, all right? That was it. It was our okay. last lesson in general, all right? Just a wrap up. So now we are going to continue with Lesson C, 2C, culture, village sports. So let's talk about uh, different types of uh, sports or uh, certain types of uh, sports. And uh, we can see that there are some sports. We may come across with some unusual sports. Uh, what I'm saying to, with the, by that is that this kind of uh, sports, they are not very common. For example, like football, baseball, boxing, they are very, you know, very uncommon. And even so, there are people that are not familiar with this type of sports. 
let me ask you something. I want you to look at the photo and let me, what can you tell me? How would you describe this sport? Swimming. Okay, swimming. And let me ask you something. Is it, <laughs> all right, is it messy, cold, slow, or tiring? Cold or oh, messy. Yeah, what do you think what do you think that is? Is it messy, cold, slow, or tiring? Messy, I think so. Mm, but uh, when something is messy, let me show you. For example, I have this 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 clothes that is a, a I shirt. know what the mean of the messy already. Okay, okay. So look at it well. I mean it's not clean, it's just like uh, you not clean your room and then it's messy. Just like That's that. right. It's that is correct. Look at very well. Uh, imagine, uh, imagine we are at that time in this river. It seems to be a river. Yeah. Do you think that maybe it's slow, tiring, cold, or messy? Cold. I think it's cold. <laughs> yeah, that may be, that may be somehow cold. Okay. That may be a somehow cold. In addition to this, what can you see there in the picture, Nyan? A man swimming in the river. Okay, the man is swimming, is snorkeling. All right. So let's learn about this. That is that is a very interesting. I want you to listen this very well. Uh, can focus on that. Um, actually, I want you to be concentrated. Uh, let me just show you. What? Popolo. All right. Uh, Listen to this. Listen okay. carefully. That is very interesting to me. I know you will be like, oh, I was not aware. I was not expected to know this information. Give me a second. Wow. Let me just go back. Okay, listen to this. Lesson 2C. Okay. I just, I just hear the lesson 2C. That's all. Yeah, that is right. Let me use... Exercise 2. Okay. Dark, cold, and scary. Okay. The British seem to enjoy unusual sports more than most other nationalities. But okay. the Bog Snorkeling Championship is one of the strangest. It takes place every year in Wales. All right. The competitors have to swim 110 metres through cold, dark, muddy water without using their arms. And they have to keep their faces in the water at all times, breathing through a snorkel. Who would want to compete in a horrible event like that? Well, in fact, more than 100 people enter it each year, many of them from other countries. Dan Morgan from Wales is the current champion. He finished the course in 1 minute 30 seconds, a world record. Is bog snorkeling really so nasty? Sheila Tompkins, the woman who started the tournament, says, Yes, it's dark and you can't see, and that's scary. So why do the British enjoy such unusual sports? Perhaps it's because we have a chance of winning. Okay, did you listen carefully? Did you listen well, Nyan? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Fantastic. So let me ask you something. Here, uh, I would like you to help me. I want you to read this. Let me check your pronunciation. And then after that, I will ask you a few quick questions. Let me see how you do it. Give me one second. Okay. One, se one second. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Can you start? Yeah. Okay. Let's okay. go. Let me see. The, Bri the British? Yes. One number one is British. Oh, uh, this well. one. Uh, the test. The test. Then I'm going to ask you the questions. Right here. Okay. I will check in your pronunciation. Uh, are you tired, Nyan? Are you feeling well? Yes, it's okay. Okay. I'm feeling well. Okay. So if you okay. uh, if you would mind, uh, can you read this for me? Yes. The British seem to enjoy unusual sports more than most other nationalities. Okay. But the box snorkeling championship is one of the strangest. It takes place every year in Wales. Okay. The competitors have to have to swim 110 meters through cold, dark, muddy water without using their arms. And they have to keep their face in the water at all times, breathing through a snorkel. Who would want to compete in a horrible event like that? Well, in fact, more than 100 people enter in each year, many of them from other countries. Dan Morgan from Wales is a, the current champion. He finished the course in one minute, 30 seconds, a world record. Is Mark snorkeling really, really so nasty? Several Tompkins, the woman who started the tournament, says, yes, it's dark and you can't see, and that's scary. So why do the British enjoy such unusual sports? Perhaps it's because we have a chance of winning. Hello. Okay, fantastic. So let me ask you some questions here. Okay, question number one. Where does the competition take place? In Wales every year. Okay. So, okay. How far do the competition have to swim? 110 meters. Okay. How many competitors enter each year? More than 100 people. Okay. What is the faster? What is the fastest? Um, what is the fastest ever time? One minute and thirty seconds. Fantastic. Who started the competition, Yan? Um, let me see. Oh, the woman. Um, she got Tomskin. Okay, and Tom number six. Why, why, why is it frightening? Why is it frightening according to Sheila Tompkins? Um, we have chance of winning. Okay, fantastic. So let me ask you something. What is the, this question is no there. What is the main idea of the topic? Um, about, uh, about, uh, Box snorkeling championship. Okay. Like some record and who who start the competition. Okay, okay, okay. Um, let uh, let me ask you something, Yan. Okay, here we are having a vocabulary. Okay, so there we have a. Uh, highlighted uh, highlighted words. We have highlighted words in the test. 
with definitions below. For example, there, I want you to find, all right, some substitute words. Look at there, for, for example, you have the, the word, uh, the expression. You have the expression to take part. For example, to take part. Um, in this case, uh, which one do you think is gonna be the best way, the best word to replace this expression, to take part? For example, to take um, part in a competition. To take part, join in, join in the competition. Is it? Okay, okay yeah. And, and look at the text over there. There are some words highlighted. There are some words highlighted there. Which oh, one competition. Do, <laughs> look at there. To take part in a competition. What could be that? What could that be? Um, competitor. Oh, wait, compete? Is it? Uh, I think so. Hello. Hello. Okay, yeah. And let me see, compete. Could be, compete will be the best, the best one. Number two, a sport competition. Jambon. Oh no, oh, um, <laughs> compete. Oh no, uh, wait, let me see. Um, oh no, wait, let me fix. The number one is competitors and number two is compete. Okay. So let's go here, let's continue. Let's continue with the next one. Um, the winner of a competition or or event. Champion. Champion. That's right. Number four, the best time. For example, distance, score, etc. The best time ever. Um. World record. Yeah, that may be. Why that sounds sounds very good. Number five, the route of a race. Uh, okay, let me see. That's fine. Let's continue. I think you did a great job. You did it very well. Okay. Yeah, let me ask you something. Are you sure you're feeling okay? I see you like, I, I feel your, I see you like down. Like you are not the center of every class. Okay, oh, look at okay. the answers over here. So yeah, you have okay. the first one is to compete, a tournament, the champion, the world record. Except the number four is that is gonna be the curse, all right? And number five, the, the competitor. Number six, the competitors. Okay. Okay, so let's continue. So I want you to listen again and choose the correct answer, all right? Lesson 2C, exercises five and six. I'm in the village of Congham, near the east coast of England. Everyone here is getting quite excited because it's nearly time for the big annual event, the World Snail Racing Championship. A man called Tom Elwes started the championship in the 1960s after seeing people racing snails in France. Last year, over 200 snails took part in the competition and hundreds of people came to watch the races. The organizers say that this year, the event is even bigger. The races take place on a circular track with the snails starting in the middle and racing 30 to 40 centimeters out to the edge of the circle. The owners paint racing numbers on the shells or put small stickers on them so that they can easily see their snail. A snail named Archie set the world record of two minutes in 1995. Last year's winner was a snail called Speedy. Jack Robbins is entering the championship for the first time this year, and he's with me now. Jack, is training really important for snail racing? Yes, it is. Why? Because you have to build up a good relationship with your snail. So the snail wants to please you. 
you know, wants to do its best for you in the race. I see. Do you think you have a good relationship with your snail? Yes, I do. I spend a lot of time with Flash. That's the name of your snail, Flash? Yes. Well, good luck, Jack. And of course, good luck, Flash. I'm in the arena now, next to the track. Let's listen to the referee start the race. Ready? Okay, listen Steady? To this. Slow! Okay. Well, the first race is over. Jack, how did Flash do? Did he win? No, unfortunately, Flash didn't win. In fact, he came last. So that's the end of the championship for us. We'll race again next year, though. Well, good luck for next year. Okay. All right. So let me see here. So I'm going to ask you, Nyan. So we are going to complete this, ex this exercise. And uh, you're going to tell me the correct answer. We are having here a multiple choice exercise let's see the number one okay people in Co Cohen are excited because the world snail racing championship what do you think the right answer is gonna be a is starting soon b is taking place there for the first time c includes competitors from different countries what do you think three Okay, you think it's C? Let's check. This one oh, is A. I... So let me see, number two, Nyan. Which is the correct track? A, B, C. or C? C? It's A. What, A? Yeah. A. You look tired, Nyan. Uh, <laughs> are you sure okay. you're okay? Yes, okay, very good. Uh, what were the symptoms you were you were having? What? Uh, what what kind of symptoms did you have? I don't know. Like, when you, when you started um, like feeling bad, what kind of symptoms did you have? Um, I have a head cage. Headache. Yeah, headache, and then like I I like a stupid people and I'll say something stupid and then my mom and my dad feeling hmm it's not very good and then they uh they buy the thermometer but actually that one is not correct what? and then it, and were, were and, you feeling were you feeling dizzy and then my mom and my dad today they they like they bought a correct one and i got about 38 38 degrees Yes, 38 degrees mm. Celsius. And then uh, I just take a rest and I just take a rest and drink some medicine. So now it's okay. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, let's continue. I hope you'll get better, uh, Nyan. I hope you okay. get better because uh, even Thank myself, you. I'm very worried about you. I see that you are not in the way how you are supposed to be, but let's try it, right? <laughs> so let's keep, let's keep this positive vision and energy you have. Okay. okay. What is the name of the fastest snail ever? Speedy. Archie. What? Wait, I heard that speedy. Oh my God. Would you like to listen the audio again one more time, Nyan? I think, okay, let me yeah. listen again. Yeah, let's listen to the audio again. Let's listen to this. Lesson 2C, exercises 5 and 6. I'm in the village of Congham, near the east coast of England. Everyone here is getting quite excited because it's nearly time for the big annual event, the World Snail Racing Championship. Okay. A man called Tom Elwes started the championship in the 1960s 
After seeing people racing snails in France, last year over 200 snails took part in the competition and hundreds of people came to watch the races. The organizers say that this year the event is even bigger. The races take place on a circular track with the snails starting in the middle and racing 30 to 40 centimeters out to the edge of the circle. The owners paint racing numbers on the shells or put small stickers on them so that they can easily see their snail. A snail named Archie set the world record of two minutes in 1995. Last year's winner was a snail called Speedy. Jack Robbins is entering the championship for the first time this year, and he's with me now. Jack, is training really important for snail racing? Yes, it is. Why? Because you have to build up a good relationship with your snail. So the snail wants to please you. You know, wants to do its best for you in the race. I see. Do you think you have a good relationship with your snail? Yes, I do. I spend a lot of time with Flash. That's the name of your snail? Flash? Yes. Well, good luck, Jack. And of course, good luck, Flash. I'm in the arena now, next to the track. Let's listen to the referee start the race. Ready, steady, slow! OK. Well, the first race is over. Jack, how did Flash do? Did he win? No, unfortunately, Flash didn't win. In fact, he came last. So that's the end of the championship for us. We'll race again next year, though. Well, good luck for next year. OK, Nyan, let's continue. Let me see. Le uh, did you listen well? Yes, I think so. OK, let me see. Fun. Number four. How has Jack tried to prepare his snail for the race? Uh, he's spending a lot of time with his nail. Okay. Uh, look, look at there. Um, which one do you think is the answer? A, B, or C? He's giving his nail. He's giving his nail a good name by spending. A, uh, you oh, say no. B. B, B, B. Okay. That's, that's right. That is correct. How does the flash do in the race? He wins. Oh, he came last. He, he can last. That is correct. All right. So let me ask you something. Can you describe the photo in exercise number one? Let me show you here. I'm referring this one. Let me go back. Can you describe this photo? A man who's swimming in the river with crash. Oh this one. Okay. Yeah, a um, man. Okay. A man was um swimming in the river with crash into a side. Is it? Okay, the man that was uh, snorkeling, snorkeling in the river, all right? Uh, especially this one is um, like snorkeling. Oh, swimming, for example, when you swim, you swim in a swimming, swimming pool, but snorkeling is like having this, all right? Using the snorkels, mm -hmm. and then you go into the water, and then you, you sw obviously you swim, but that is that like the, the slightly different we are having here. The slightly different is that it's not clean. You use the snorkels, all right, to go into the water and to be able to see things, all right. However, the when you're swimming, you just go into the pool and not necessarily you have to to wear snorkels. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay. So let's continue. 
So let's proceed. Here, I'm gonna show you this. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> I went ahead. So let me see, I'm sorry. I went ahead, I'm sorry, my bad. You just wrote to two days. Yeah, that is, that, that is uh, we are advancing too much. So let me ask you, <clears throat> okay. So something I'm gonna give you as a homework, no now, no now. As a homework, I'm gonna give you this project, all right? Um, okay. To find information about an unusual sports or event in your country or abroad. And I would like you to make notes about it. For example, you're going to tell me where the event, uh, the event take place and, and when and how often. You're gonna tell me what the name of the event is and what happens at the event, uh, whether you would like to take part in, in the event and why and why not. And uh, this is very much what you're gonna do. You're gonna be talking like any type of unusual sport, you know? Yeah. Something that is uh, our events, you know? I can, t I can give you some examples. For example, like uh, cake, cake warm. You know what is the uh, cake warm? Like people get uh, cakes and they, <laughs> they launch cakes. Sometimes people go in the dust and they swim on the dust. All right. Oh, wow. That's this, these th things that are very unusual. Let me show okay. you, for example, some of them. So, and then after that, uh, let me ask you something. Do you know in your country any type of unusual sport or unusual event? Mm, uh, I I'm not really sad about this. I don't know. I was sad. Okay, you are not really familiar with that. Let me show you here. Okay, allow me just one second so I can show you very well. So there you can see the picture of some unusual all right, events. Wait with me. Look at there. Just one second, slow then. Let's just start with a neutral sports. Let me show you some pictures and later after, uh, I, I'm, and then after that, I'm gonna show you some unusual events. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, look at this. The song okay, I understand. <laughs> look at this, okay? Look at this mm -hmm. kind of look at this kind of a uh, sport. Let me show you. This is a type of unusual, unusual sport. All right. So another one that is with the feet. This one is very unusual. Let me show you more. Look at this one. They take somebody else on their shoulders on the on. The back flick down, flick down. Okay. So, so now there's look at this one. <laughs> Can you see? So, what you're gonna do is very much to describe and be and to be talking about this type of unusual event. Look at this one. They are into a bubble, and they have to roll. <laughs> So maybe if there is one in Vietnam, I'm gonna show you one of them that is unusual here. That is the boogie. 
look at there. That is uh, another unusual sport that is chess. That is chess, <laughs> but they are like in a ring as they are going to wrestle. This is the boogie car competition. This one is in the dust. They compete, but they get dirty, the whole body. And then usually the, the, the in this sport, the boogie car competition, the, the owner of this sport, the owner of this sport is to be dirty. They get a lot of dust. And then that is what have, uh, that is what makes the competitor to feel proud. The more dolls they have, they feel like um, they are they are doing what they have to do. If they are not truly dirty, if they are not truly dirty, then they are not competing very well. And this is oh. what happens in this event. To finish with this, Nyan, uh, what did we talk today about in this class? Um, we talk about um, like from uh, anything, the sport that is not really like um, like some strange sport event, unusual sport event, like um, sports or event. You can talk sport. about yeah, especially it was a sport. But um, let me show you here real quick. Okay, can you see here? No, wait, just wait, okay. Okay, so especially that was the dark hole and it's scary, that was the test that we talked, okay? And then we were talking about like the, this competition, which is very unusual. This is a very unusual sport, all right? And it's more, it's enjoyed for many nationalities, all right? The idea of this sport is to snorkel in the in a in a waters that are not clear. In waters that are not not clear, you can see the conditions of this river. <laughs> in my opinion, in my opinion, it seems not to be clear, and we don't know if even the river is contaminated or something like that. But especially, uh, I can tell you that for many people, that may be like. Uh, what can I tell you? I, I think in the, for many people, it may be like unusual, but this is the attractive attractive part of this kind of a sport. Like snorkeling in this kind of river, maybe the, the, the weather, the temperature is very cold and, uh, and things like that, all right? So Nyan, what else did we do in our class? Yeah, well, we... We uh, talked about some more unusual event like um the snorkeling box um snorkeling box in uh, uh British in every year and take place every year in Wales. Uh, we talked about like the snail race like that and yeah. Okay. <coughs> Fantastic. So, Nian, we have already finished with the lesson. So, I hope you get better. Remember to have some rest because I know you really need it. And okay. uh, let me just share to you the homework real quick. Um, I know that um, project aid, exercise aid. Yeah. Student book to see. Okay. Let me just write it here let me, uh, so that you can have it. Okay. Okay. This way you're gonna have it in in Zalo. Uh, you will never. You will need to. Okay. Oh, it's weird. It's not allowed me to to write. 
Let me see. Okay, I, I took a note in the notebook already. It's okay. Okay, you took the note? Okay. No. Anyways, Nyan, thank you so much for being present in the, in the class. I know you you feel like tired. Have some rest. Okay. Sleep very well. And see you in our next class. I hope you get well. Bye. Goodbye, Bye. Nyan. See you.